So here comes Valentine's Day. I think we need to grab a cup of coffee and have a little discussion. With me? Get your coffee. Let's talk. Valentine's Day is hard for just about anyone who's not in some kind of a loving, committed relationship. But when you are with a narcissist or you have been with a narcissist, chances are they're going to do one of four things for Valentine's Day. Number one, they're going to blow it out of the water and do it in an amazing, awesome way. But if that's the case for you, you're probably not watching this video because that happened early in the relationship during the love bombing phase. The other thing they're going to do is probably disappoint you if you're still in the relationship. And if they don't disappoint you, that's because they've already left. And they're going to go for the Hoover maneuver where they're going to try to suck you back in. In which case, they might make it pretty good for about 24 hours or less. Most often, they're either going to ruin it or they're going to suck you back in. So today at QueenBeing.com, we're going to talk about all of those things. The possibility of having your Valentine's Day ruined the possibility of being hoovered back in, and exactly why narcissists want to ruin your holidays, including Valentine's Day, unfortunately. So, let's get started. My name is Angie Atkinson, and on this channel, I offer free daily video coaching to help you discover, understand, and overcome narcissistic abuse in toxic relationships. I like to call it toxic relationship rehab. So, if that sounds good to you, hit that subscribe button and we'll get going. I think one of the worst things that happens to us on Valentine's Day is that we look at Instagram and Facebook and we see all of these amazing, you know, couples. We see that some someone did something, you know, they bought this beautiful diamond encrusted awesomeness for somebody or somebody over here did some other amazing thing and and we're just thinking, gosh, we we just want everything to be peaceful, you know. And when you're dealing with a narcissist, whether you're still with them or you've just recently left them, you're going through a lot in your head already. Valentine's Day just kind of feels like a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. It's not that great. So how do you deal with those feelings of maybe feeling a little jealous of other people's awesome relationships and things like that? Number one, the first thing you can do is try to either one of two things, either be happy for people when you see that stuff and you know, hit the heart button and feel positive things for those people because that could draw more positive things to yourself or don't look at that stuff. It's not gonna kill you to skip Facebook and Instagram on Valentine's Day, right? But if you need to, try to feel happy for those people if you do need to look. Definitely do not look at your narcissist stuff or the new supply stuff if you happen to have split up from the narcissist already. Another great idea for Valentine's Day is to get together with some friends who also aren't thrilled about Valentine's Day and kind of do like a non-Valentine's Day thing, a celebration. Otherwise, do something that makes you feel good and just kind of steer clear of the, the media that day, like I said. Have realistic expectations. Understand what is probably going to happen on Valentine's Day. If you are still with the narcissist, understand you're probably going to be disappointed. If you're not still with the narcissist, you need to prepare yourself for dealing with the Hoover. So right now we're going to talk about why the narcissist wants to ruin your holiday. This is a clip from a previously done video. Take a look. So why do narcissists make the holiday suck so much? Well, number one, they seriously lack empathy. They do not have the ability to care how you feel about anything. They want everything to be all about them, which kind of leads me to number two, but we'll get there in a minute. The point is, when a narcissist is not the center of attention, they cannot stand it. And on the holidays, on people's birthdays, all this stuff, they don't get to be the center of attention. The lack of empathy causes them to treat people like crap, causes them to treat people without respect, without love. So they like empathy. That's why they don't they don't care they're hurting you on the holidays. They don't care that it's your favorite time of year. They don't care that you're already stressed the heck out, right? They just want what they want when they want it. This brings me to number two. Narcissists don't like it when they're not the center of attention. Since they don't like it when they're not their center of attention, they do whatever they can to get attention. And since they have a lack of empathy, they don't care who they hurt in the process. If the narcissist acts sad or angry or miserable, that means everyone around them might cater to their needs. They want to be made happy and you'll try to do everything that you can because you want to be happy on the holiday too. And if you've been in the relationship with them long, you're probably already stressing about this now. If the narcissist can make you feel like you're responsible for their moods, woo, they've won. They love it. They want you to jump when they say jump. They want you to feel scared or upset if they're angry or bored or lazy or whatever, lonely. See, with a narcissist, attention is attention. If they can't get it to be all about them in a good way, they'll get it to be all about them in a bad way. They don't care which one, whatever works. This brings me to number three. In some cases, 
narcissists are afraid of intimacy so they don't want to go to the family events they don't want you to go to their family events because that might indicate a certain level of intimacy now, this is not the case for every narcissist because if you've been with a narcissist for a long time you might find that they kind of pop back into your life right around the holidays but in a newer relationship a narcissist may find a reason to avoid intimacy on the holidays by making sure that you're excluded from their holiday plans or vice versa here's another thing number four a narcissist may have found an alternate form of supply and if that's the case they're definitely going to be in the love bombing process with the supply so they're gonna find a reason to avoid spending time with you so they can spend time with the new supply you have to remember who you're dealing with here a narcissist doesn't act like anything other than a narcissist if you expect them to act like anything else you're just gonna be setting yourself up for disappointment so if you're still dealing with a narcissist on a holiday this year make sure you understand who you're dealing with try not to take anything personally and if the narcissist says or does things that upset you around the holidays try this one word interesting gray rock don't give them a single minute of your anxiety or stress if you can avoid it at least don't let them see it if you must deal with a narcissist on this holiday remember the gray rock remember to say interesting instead of what do you mean la 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 no don't give them one bit of your anxiety okay that's what they want they want attention if you avoid giving them the attention they're seeking they might just leave you alone or at least stop the current tactic and try something different now that we've gotten through that I'm going to share with you a couple of clips that I've done about hoovering so what hoovering is all about why they want to do it on the holidays and I'll be sharing Richard Grannon's opinion on hoovering which is very powerful so that's near the end of the video stay tuned for that all right take a look so what is hoovering anyway just for those of you who don't know the hoovering technique was named after the famous vacuum cleaner as you might have suspected and it's one of the many common manipulation tactics used by narcissists it's basically when a narcissist sucks you back into the relationship after they've gone no contact or after they have discarded you whether that was intentional or otherwise and often after you have chosen to go no contact they suck you back into the relationship or some version of it it often begins innocently enough sort of subtly but it always happens with just one target and that is to regain control of you in the relationship whether it's because they want you to be their backup supply or it's because they want you to remain as their permanent primary supply so here's a pretty ex a simple example of what hoovering looks like do you remember in the peanuts cartoons when Charlie Brown would come along and try to kick the ball that Lucy was holding for him every time he tried to kick it she'd just pull it away and laugh and laugh and laugh when he fell on his head Charlie Brown oh Charlie Brown I can't believe it she must think I'm the most stupid person alive she'd act like there was no tomorrow she kind of enjoyed his pain well Charlie Brown did what any kid would he he would stop trusting her to hold the ball but inevitably Lucy would promise every time that this time she'd really let him kick that ball hold it ha you'll pull it away and I'll land flat on my back and kill myself come on Charlie Brown it's a big honor for you and inevitably she'd pull it away at the last second and she'd bust out laughing again as he fell well if it's that important a person should never turn down a big honor maybe I should do it besides she wouldn't try to trick me on a traditional holiday this time I'm gonna kick that football clear to the moon Hoovering usually begins after the devalue and the discard phases when the silent treatment stops giving the narcissist pleasure and when they're ready for more more of that supply that you've been so good at giving them for all these months or years or it'll start when the narcissist knows that you're left or you're leaving and they fear that you won't return because they like your supply the thing is it's especially prominent on the holidays because people are lonely not just narcissists reach out to old exes on the holidays my friend the idea is that the narcissist needs to re-establish contact with you in order to re-engage you for the narcissistic supply that you've been so good at providing all this time this is a dangerous tactic my friend because once the narcissist gets their foot in the door you often find yourself being love bombed and hearing promises of brighter days ahead everything's gonna be awesome but just like poor Charlie Brown you're bound to fall again so how are you gonna deal with a narcissist hoovering today if you're still stuck in that relationship might as well just let it happen happen but keep some safeguards in place so first of all don't take the bait because if you do you might end up allowing the narcissist to cross your boundary 
fees and you'll end up settling for less than you really deserve in the long run. Plus, you don't want to allow yourself to start doing the things that you wouldn't normally do in order to please the narcissist again and you don't want to stop taking care of yourself in favor of the narcissist needs. Most importantly, you don't want to give up your own independence. But in general, if we're talking about regular hoovering where they're trying to suck you back in on a holiday, let's go with this, all right? The first thing you need to do is make sure that your boundaries are firmly in place. Don't let them be changed or broken during the holidays. It is too easy to give in right now, right? Because we're all feeling kind of lonely. Don't do it. Number two, if you've put safeguards in place or consequences in place due to the narcissist's bad decisions, keep those in place even and especially during hoovering, especially during the holidays. Know that this phase is going to end. Know that you're going to be back to normal with the narcissist at some point. This is just a temporary attempt the narcissist is making to suck you back in. Don't believe me? Look at the narcissist's previous patterns in your own relationship or the relationships they've had with other people in the past. Next up, make a special effort to maintain your healthy activities and relationships and even increase in your engagement with those things anything healthy in your life, especially during the holidays. This will help to strengthen your recovery efforts and it'll help you stay on track with no contact during the holidays. A lot of times we kind of let the narcissist hoover us to bargain with us, right? We will try to create positive change in our relationships because right now they're, they're trying to get us back. So they're acting nice and sweet and kind. So we'll be like, well, I'll tell you what, I'll consider it, but you have to do X, Y, Z first, or I have to see that you're trying. I have to see this or that or the other thing. And we think that because the narcissist seems so receptive, they seem so on top of stuff, they seem like they're so, yes, anything you want, I'll do that thing, but at least more so than usual. Well, our requests seem like they're going to be heard, but they're not. You got to understand, most of the time, any change that is created during a hoovering phase holiday or otherwise, is going to be short-lived. You're only going to be setting yourself up for disappointment in that situation. You have to keep in mind that as big of a jerk as the narcissist can be, they are a person with a personality disorder. They are a person with a personality disorder and mood swings, and they're rapidly swinging here and there and the everywhere, rapidly changing ideal ideals, ideas and ideals, all part of that thing. So you don't want to allow their personality disorder to fool you. You have to remember what they really are. Even if part of them really wants to create those changes and they really seem honest, it will not continue to stay safe for you. It will eventually roll right back to where you were when you didn't want to be with them in the first place. Next up, remember that knowledge is power. Educate yourself on NPD. You're doing that right now. Make an effort to understand what you're dealing with and who you're dealing with because understanding does lead to overcoming. Next, don't allow yourself to depend on the narcissist emotionally at all, especially during the holidays. They will disappoint you every single time, especially when it matters the most. The hoovering phase can and will cloud your judgment and you might even end up setting yourself up for some real emotional devastation if you allow the narcissist to lull you into that false sense of security and intimacy. Don't let it happen to you. Next, if you have been physically abused by a narcissist and hoovering is an attempt to make you forget it, please don't. Get some help. Check out the emergency domestic violence page at queenbeing.com. Contact your local authorities, whatever you need to do. Get a restraining order. Stay the hell away from that person, even on the holidays. Finally, understand this deal for what it is. The narcissist doesn't love you. The narcissist is not capable of actual love, except maybe, and I don't even know for sure that they would love themselves. I think most narcissists hate themselves, and that's kind of why they secretly are who they are. The fact is you're just a pawn in the narcissist game, and right now the game is I don't want to be lonely on the holiday. So get off the roller coaster, my friend. Go or stay no contact or low contact. If you aren't able to completely cut all contact, try the gray rock method. It works. The bottom line is the one thing that you can count on with a narcissist is that they do not change. They might get better at hiding their true selves for a while and they might pretend to change for a while to get you back and you might really believe them, but they never actually change. At least not in my experience, not in my research and not in anybody else's experience who's ever spoken to me about it. So you know my stance on this. I think it's really important to stay focused on what you want, not what you don't want, and to remind yourself why you shouldn't get involved. Personally, I think it's a really good idea to make a list of reasons that you wanted to leave or go no contact in the first place and to stick it somewhere you can find it when you feel weak. And of course, if you need to, go minute by minute in order to cope with the difficult times of feeling the urge to call the narcissist or stalk their social media profiles or whatever, then go minute by minute. Use pattern interrupts. Use different techniques to help yourself. And I'll link to some videos up here for you with more information about that. Here is what Richard thinks about all that stuff. Take a look. Well, we've, we've got to look at, 
you know, the reality of, of what is happening. And that includes the totality of the reality. So um, we're using these words that we have within, within our community, uh, relapsing, hoovering and everything else. That's one way of framing it. And then there's mm-hmm. the framing that other people would give to it, which is, you know, you got back with your abusive boyfriend. You got back with your abusive girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's nice to put everything in layman's terms, just to remind ourselves of what we're really doing so that we're not avoiding it. Yeah. You know, and then when you use that kind of language, you'd be like, why would a person do that? I've already identified that my girlfriend is abusive in this way, this way, this way, this way, and this way. I went through the rigmarole of splitting up with her. Why would I get back with her? What's going on for me? That, that would happen what was going on for me when i originally got with her and what was going on for me the second time around now usually what people will find if we come back to this element of power dynamics is that they're in a weak position so you were very lonely the first time you got with that person and then you split up with them and then you kind of miss them and you were lonely so to relieve yourself of that pain of loneliness you just got back with them again and started the whole cycle again when you put it in those terms i think it's easier to see how um, non-melodramatic and how pedestrian the decisions we're making are and what's the key problem here well the key problem the common denominator in the two scenarios i just described is i'm lonely okay so why is that happening what kind of a lifestyle am i living where i would feel like this horrible person is is not just my best option but my only option something's up and uh, that should be addressed all right that's all I've got for you today. Tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what your feelings are. Are you looking forward to this Valentine's Day thing or not? Is Valentine's Day a stress for you or do you just consider it kind of a stupid Hallmark holiday? Share your thoughts, your ideas, your experiences in the comment section below. And most of all, do me one huge favor today and love yourself. That's something that a lot of us survivors really need to get better at is loving ourselves. So if nothing else, make today about you and loving you. That's all I've got for you right now. Be sure to check out the videos in the links above and in the description below. I'm going to share videos with you there that will help you to stay focused on what you want and not what you don't want and help you get through this day. As always, thank you so much for being a part of my day and a part of my life. And hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean a lot to me. I'll see you soon. It's my mission to teach others what I know to be true. You really can create the life you want. Take care of your body. Take care of your soul. Nurture the real you and introduce him or her to the world. Be comfortable in your own skin and in your place in this world. Take your spot. Take it now. And the universe will take its cue from you. You feel me? If so, subscribe to my channel. Let's get it done together.